Congratulations, you're still there and watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And, um, well, we're in an age of technology, but how far are we exploiting and exploring uh, that sector of our economy? And we know that there are some challenges that uh, are being faced by startups and all that. So today we're going to be looking at the development of technology, especially in Africa, and the availability of funding. That's a very, very important thing. How can people who want to... Uh, what can startups draw funding and from where and you know what criteria do they need to meet, meet before they get all this funding and we're being joined from Johannesburg South Africa the CEO of Founders Factory Africa in the person of Bongani Sitole good morning and welcome to the program uh, thank you very much, and uh, thanks for having us uh, on the program. Okay. Well, like I said, it's an age of technology, but we don't seem to have, uh, you know, exploited that that uh, section or that sector maximally, even though we have the brains in Africa and all that. So we'd like to start with a, a background on uh, why you think there is a challenge at all to uh, this technology, you know, harnessing whatever potential are there in technology in Africa here. Uh, thank you very much. I uh, wouldn't necessarily frame it that there's a problem with technology per se, but I'd rather say there are a lot of challenges in Africa that needs technology. Uh, we strongly believe that uh, employing the services of technology in the challenges that we see across Africa, that can help us to scale quite quickly and, of course, impact the economy. If you look at the development uh, of China in 30 years between 1970 to year 2000, the employment of technology uh, in how they transformed China, uh, we strongly believe that if we can take that path, particularly baking uh, technology-led businesses to essentially drive growth and scale across the continent is one of the paths that we strongly believe that we can take as a continent to be able to unlock growth. Yeah, but anything that needs to grow uh, needs to be homegrown as well. How, how would you rate the uh, level of homegrown technology that we have in Africa? I'm not talking about the one we import to come and help us solve the problems that yes, we have yes. in Africa. So, homegrown technology, how would you rate it? 100%, and, and that is really what we should be driving because plug and play in Africa doesn't work, right? And the reason for that is you can see how West Africa operates vis-a-vis South Africa or even East Africa. So, for that, for that matter, we have to develop local solutions um, with local uh, founders to find innovation that is relevant to that local market. So, and that is basically our thesis of existence as Farms Vector Africa. We strongly believe that uh, locally you need two things. One, the skill sets uh, that understands the local market, understands the users, and backing them with capital to be able to help build those solutions. And that is the, you know, to support your statement, we, we need to be able to do that as Africans across major markets. Now, let's look at uh, these issues in depth that are central mm -hmm. to the development of tech and the availability of funds for that sector yes. on the continent. We, um, so if you look at uh, the, the, you know, the startup sector, we strongly believe that it's underfunded. Right, in many ways. Um, to be able to back these uh, founders, you need to have a lot more capital. If you look at last year, we had uh, over 8 billion that uh, came into the continent to support tech, uh, tech led startups. But when you think about the magnitude of the continent, 54 countries, you think about 8 billion, it's not enough. Right? We need more capital. In comparison to emerging markets, uh, and you look at the global capital that, that is coming to the continent is 1.2% of, of capital flowing into Africa in comparison to the rest of the markets. So the question that we need to be asking ourselves is how do we increase that pie, mm -hmm. right, by having more capital to be able to support uh, a lot more grassroots uh, founders uh, to be able to find these uh, you know, challenges and build solutions, bring innovation to be able to, uh, to increase um, you know, the, 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 the size uh, of, of the economy through the, you know, um, technology. So you are right, uh, we need a lot more capital, and I think we're starting to see a lot more um, you know, uh, VC uh, growth uh, because of the innovation that we're seeing across different uh, uh, markets in Africa. 
Yeah, but who should drive this process of, you know, this funding? You, st you talked about funding coming into Africa. Do, do you think it's something that should be left in the hands of government or is a private sector thing and how should be, it be done? Uh, it should be both. Uh, let me start with government, right? So firstly, if you look at uh, the four major regions in Africa, uh, which is West Africa driven by, you know, Nigeria, Lagos, uh, East Africa, Kenya and South Africa and also Cairo and Egypt. One of the things that governments should be doing is to create what we call Startup Acts. So a Startup Act is a way in which a you know, government is formulating processes to enable and support innovation in their local markets. So I think if a government can be able to channel capital through you know, creating regulation and how they support startups. I think that is the first thing that a government should be focusing on. On the private sector, sector side, I think we need a lot more capital coming from corporate, including companies like ourselves who are investing and uh, building trust into local uh, founders to be able to bridge the gap between uh, overseas capital and uh, local markets. One of the challenges is, you know, in Africa as, as an emerging market, is really trust, right? So if you have companies like Founders Factory Africa who can be able to bridge and break the barrier of trust uh, between local founders and overseas capital, to be able to direct that capital to where it's need, need, needed the most is really what we need to be able to drive, of course, with the support of government and private sector. Well, we are in this part of the world avid consumers of tech services and products. Unfortunately, most of them are packaged and imported. Is that the case where you are in South Africa? There are solutions that I can say, if you look at them you know, overseas, you can definitely figure out how you package them for local markets. But for the most part, what we're seeing is groundbreaking innovation that's driven by local challenges and lo local nuances. And um, we, we want to support those type of technologies. I mean, there are few businesses, especially here in South Africa, that have scaled where it was literally a, you know, an entrepreneur who saw a technology um, somewhere in the US that can be packaged to the local market. But in order for that to work and scale, you need to be able to figure out how you're going to package that for the local market because it's definitely not a plug and play because how Africa operates is completely different to, you know, to the rest of the developing markets. But what we want to advocate for is really driving new innovations coming from Africa and figuring out a way or ways rather to be able to package these solutions, um, you know, in other regions in Africa and hopefully we can export it to global markets. Okay. Uh, well, you did mention something just before uh, this response that you just gave now. You talked about your own company, for instance, uh, aiding startups. So forgive me if we zero in on yeah. what activities you do in your company because everybody would want to take advantage of that and see how they can get some kind of funding. So you, when you say you support uh, startups, what kind of uh, startups do you target? Uh, are they specific ones that can access the kind of funding that you give? in Founders Factory, for instance? Yes, so uh, Founders Factory Africa is a pan-African early stage uh, investor uh, alongside our studio support. What that means is that we focus on early stage, meaning that we start from a founder having an idea uh, and they want to be able to build a solution that can be scalable to serve customers right up until um, you know, pre-Series A. So that in, in, in the world of VC is what we call early stage and that's, that's our focus. So how we're supporting these uh, founders is through deployment of capital and hands-on support. Hands-on support essentially means that we deploy people uh, to work with these founders on a day-to-day -day basis uh, to essentially find a scalable business model that can be able to, you know, to, to be exported into, into other regions. So as a founder, you come in, you get capital, you get product support, you get growth support, you get partnership support to be able to find a path to scale your business. And we are currently about 60 people uh, across three regions. We, our HQ is in South Africa. We also have an office in Kenya and an office in, in Lagos. The reason for local presence is, again, what I said, bringing local solutions uh, to local problems through uh, local understanding. And hence, the reason why we hire people in these local regions to support these local founders. 
Okay, so you, you're not targeting a particular country, you're not target, targeting a particular region, you're not targeting a particular kind of tech, it's general. So that's, that, there's two questions in, in what you've asked. One is we're targeting, uh, so we're a Pan-African company. Mm -hmm. So what that means is that uh, in, if you think about West region, whether you're in Ghana, you're in Nigeria, we are able to help you as a founder because you've got presence in Ghana, mm -hmm. sorry, in, in Nigeria. If you're in East Africa, whether you're in Tanzania or, or wherever, we have presence in Kenya, we are able to support that entire region. Mm -hmm. So the Pan-African presence means that we are able to support um, you know, companies across Africa. That's the first. Um, the, the second, in terms of um, uh, uh, our target market, we started over the last four years in three sectors, which was fintech, health, uh, and agritech. We've just recently gone a little bit agnostic, which means that we're taking um, you know, opportunities that we think can scale across Africa beyond the three sectors that we have mentioned. So if you are a founder uh, building a, you know, solutions that are scalable in Africa, talk to us. Uh, we could be able to look at that and perhaps fund you. What sort of uh, development are we talking about with your agri-tech? I'm very excited about that because agriculture yeah. is something I have a passion for and I know that we can do more in the continent with regards to uh, food security. What sort of yes. tech are we talking about in agriculture? There's a, there's a couple of challenges in the agri agriculture space and maybe let me start by saying that uh, most of the African countries uh, the contribution to, to GDP, in some instances 40%, in some instances 60% contribution by smallholder far farmers to the, you know, the, the, to the local country GDP. If you think about that, it means that we need to be able to uh, build efficiencies um, to support uh, local farmers to be able to bring, you know, to be able to produce more. Secondly, there's a lot of wastage uh, because there's no efficiency in how you move crops uh, or produce rather uh, from harvest to market. Mm -hmm. Number three is that we're still struggling to figure out how to connect local exports to global, uh, to global markets. So what we are looking to do first and foremost is to be able to one, digitize the smallholder farmers to bring them into trade and connect that end to end journey. Secondly, to provide capital that is needed to these smallholder farmers. Because one of the challenges, the smallholder farmers don't have data. So if they go to a bank and asking for capital to be able to produce more, the bank cannot support them because they don't have data to back their credit line. Mm. So we build solutions like that to be able to solve those type of challenges. One, to give them capital to produce more, two, to reduce wastage, three, to be able to build that end-to-end -end journey to bring produce to market in a faster, faster pace, and, and fourthly, to figure out if we can be able to uh, bridge the gap between local produce and global markets. When you talk about supporting startups, uh, at what level do you support? I know you've talked about uh, uh, giving them support, but uh, where do you get to before you say you, they're independent, they can stand on their own, or do you monitor them for life? So again, referring to the stages that we focus on, uh, take into consideration BC landscape. So we focus on uh, pre-seed up until uh, pre-series A. So that is our lifetime span that we focus on. Um, post that, we continue to uh, look, monitor their growth and should they need us to help them with expansion into other markets uh, or they need us to connect them to additional um, investors, uh, both locally, meaning Africa and, and global, we are able to, to, to do that. So our goal is to provide that support end to end. But the actual hands-on support of building product and finding path to scale uh, that business, typically we do that in the stages that I've mentioned. So we provide things like, you know, they could come to our office, they have um, access to about five to seven people in different uh, areas of the building startup. Um, and literally it's hands-on support, it's not advice. Okay, so what has been your level of success like so far? So the way in which we evaluate success uh, is to, well, let me put it this way. We have uh, invested in about 55 startups uh, in our, uh, over the last four years, and that is growing. We look into investing to more business and African. Uh, and over the, over the last five and a half years, we've started to see success. And how we're evaluating that is the growth of valuation of businesses. 
So if we see that your business was, was valued at 5 million as an example two years ago and our support has pushed, pushed your valuation up to 15 million, 20 million, that's how we are evaluating how we are supporting these businesses. Secondly, we look at uh, customer growth and retention because a business, uh, you know, is not a business if the revenue line is not growing. So if we're able to see that increase of retention and customer growth and also uh, an increase in valuation, that is a signal for us that the support structure that we provide into these businesses is actually quite valuable to the African farmers. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, the tech sector is booming and so is our youth population on the continent. How excited are the youth in tech as it concerns agriculture? Are they involved in it or are they just more interested in tech as it relates to uh, robotics, robotics <laughs> AI, <laughs> telephones, computers and all of that? Are they interested in tech as it relates to agriculture? So, so let's, let's talk about what technology means, right? For us, the way we think about it, technology is a means to an end, right? What that means is that you have to find a problem you have to figure out what scale would look like and how to support more customers. Mm -hmm. Then you employ technology that is relevant to that problem. Mm -hmm. In some instances, AI could be a path. In some instances, it's digital transactions. In some instances, it's being able to connect uh, you know, um, agro-dealers to uh, farmers. In some instances, connecting farmers to, to the market. So when you talk about technology, it's a path to scale in itself is a means to an end, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to find a right technology for the right problem. So in some, challenge, in some instances, we see founders trying to employ the buzzwords like AI in, in you know, wrong problems. And the challenge with that is you, you never find a path to scale because you are employing a different or rather a incorrect technology for the problem that you have found. So what we strongly advocate for is one, figure out the problem, understand the customer's needs, and figure out which technology would help you to scale, right? Um, so so we, we employ technology in that lens as opposed to technology in itself being a, um, you know, a, a, a driver. Well, you are Pan-African, but we are interested in Nigeria right now. <laughs> so uh, tell us the experience you've had in Nigeria. And tie that, um, sorry, I'm giving you uh, double barrier questions as it is, tie that to... If you were given an opportunity, for instance, to talk to policymakers in Nigeria uh, to make tech grow more than it is right now, what would you tell them? Uh, interesting question. So if you look at uh, the, the growing um, markets in Africa, uh, Nigeria, uh, probably followed by Egypt, are the leading markets, right, in terms of uh, the adoption of technology. Also in the VC space, if you look at the um, number of uh, tech-led businesses across Africa, Nigeria is one of the leaders, right? So that means that uh, Nigeria in itself uh, has seen a need to be able to back, uh, you know, tech-led tech businesses. And uh, the 55 businesses that we have, over 30%, uh, of our portfolio is actually in Nigeria. So, in coming back to your question in terms of how we can be able to support a lot more founders in the uh, Nigerian market, we strongly believe that a tie to um, uh, uh, the government uh, and enabling policies for uh, you know for startups to be able to thrive from from tax to how you open a bank account to digital transactions to how we uh, provide digital skill sets to unlock growth for, for these founders is actually quite important. And if you look at on the Nigerian market, there's, uh, there's a couple of activities that we've started to see where uh, the Nigerian market is actually creating pathways uh, to collaborate with um, you know, policymakers um, in the technology sector, uh, including companies like ourselves, to find a pathway to unlock growth through tech-led tech businesses. So we're really excited about what Nigeria is doing and hopefully can be able to be, or rather at least build a blueprint uh, across Africa in terms of how to support tech-led businesses to unlock growth. Okay, well, um, <laughs> I'd like you to talk to um, uh, startup, startups in Nigeria or in Africa because they could be watching from any, any angle. Okay, so startups in Africa and, um, you know, things they need to look out for 
things they need to avoid if that is possible because this is a lucrative sector of our economy right now and the future is tech and so we need words of encouragement words of, that will guide the people uh, rightly when they w want to venture into it there are some people with ideas that are just under their pillow they've been there for a long yeah. time and they don't know how to go about yeah. it so just a word to them so that's why we are here right as founders of factory africa and i strongly believe that we need uh, a lot more support structure like founders Victory africa across the continent uh, that can you know build platforms to enable uh, these founders to be able to build solutions. So uh, in answering your question, uh, as a founder, I think first and foremost, if you have found a problem that you strongly believe that you can be able to uh, solve, then look for companies like ourselves, right? Uh, come in, um, you know, come share your ideas with us and let's figure out if we can be able to support you shape that into a viable business model. Uh, if you are a tech-led entrepreneur already with a business, but you are stuck, you're looking for capital, you're looking for pathways to grow your know, business, come talk to us because we are here to essentially unlock uh, growth for, for, for these startups. So uh, founders have to look for opportunities to essentially build their businesses. First and foremost, they have to make sure that they don't necessarily employ technology to grow. They need to understand their customers, figure out what their customers' needs are, and then look for technology to be able to support, um, you know, that 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 vision to unlock scale uh, for 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 their for, for what they're trying to to solve for in their local market. Mm. So, in dealing with your startups um, across the places where you are site situated. May I know um, the number of girls or women who are enrolling or who are getting involved in this? Are they showing enthusiasm in tech as their male So, friends? yeah. Yes, so that, that's actually a, a, a good question. Um, when we actually look at the VC space just globally, right, um, we, we see that less than 5% of women founders are being supported. And as far as Factory Africa, we are making it intentional to actually support women, right? If you look at the, the space that you love, uh, which is Agritech, a lot of it is actually uh, driven by women in the continent, right? There's a lot of women participation in agtech space. And uh, it is our goal to be able to support uh, women across the board and increase uh, the participation. Our current um, statistics in our portfolio over the 55 businesses in comparison to global statistics, we are over 20% in our um, you know, women-led uh, founders. And that for us is exciting. And we want to look pathway to actually double that number uh, over the next five years and how we can actually bring a lot more women into the space and supporting them. We know that uh, across Africa, there's different um, limitation, limitations, challenges, um, culture, you know, cultural barriers uh, that actually prevents women to participate and we want to be able to find ways to break to break those barriers and be able to provide a lot more capital to women and support them so that they can be able to, to be in power with um, uh, their male counterparts. Okay, Maureen, you've heard that. You, you had to bring women into it. And <laughs> <laughs> it's expected. <laughs> We'd like to thank you, Mr. Sitole, for coming on the program today. It's really enlightening. And for the, uh, for the startups out there, please just look for Founders Factory Africa. Or if you have opportunity to get in touch with another uh, company or another group that can give you the opportunity or that can give you the funding or can guide you, then do that, which means, uh, from what Mr. Sitoli has said, which means there are opportunities all around. You just need to tap into it. But today, we found Founders Factory, and we're hoping you are going to take advantage. Mr. Sitoli, thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you for having us. We really appreciate it. Yeah. And before we go, we'll leave you with our quote of the day. Yeah. <laughs> the technology you use impresses no one. The experience you create with it is everything. The technology you use impresses no one, but the experience you create with it is everything. That's from Sean Garrity. Okay, we'd like to thank you for being a part of our show uh, this morning. Uh, the last guest there was Mr. Bongani Sitole, and we're hoping that you have learned something and you are going to take advantage of that. Let's do it again tomorrow. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. And I am Maureen Menno Mwizigi. Join us again tomorrow.